and uh, it's funny. I was at that Toronto show that you were talking about too, right? When they reunited and they did the countdown on the screen, it was super exciting. Was it um, sound uh, at the Sound it? Academy? Yeah. yeah, yeah. They did a couple days at the Sound Academy, and that was off the charts. And that's one of those um, things that that band likes to do too. They rehearse so much. Um, we rehearse so much, but also when you're doing something like that, you get into the club and you do a couple days of rehearsals in the club. And so that show that we saw at Sound Academy was so honed. So the sound was perfect. The band performed incredibly well. And I could tell you that that's, I was at that reunion show and I turned to my wife who I went with and just jokingly, well, maybe not jokingly because I always like to put it out in the universe as a real thing. I said, well, you know what? I'm a huge fan of Bruce, you know, the original bass player in the band. I think he's one of Canada's best bass players ever and and uh, like rock bass players. And I'm watching them and I'm saying, but he lives in Florida, you know, Mel. And uh, if these guys can't get him up to play a show, they better call me. And if they don't call me, I'm going to be pissed. Right. And it's just kind of joking. And she giggled. But I, about five days later, I got a call from Christian. Hey, Chuck, it's Christian from my mother. I was like, hey, dude, what's going on? And it turned out they needed a, a bass player just to rehearse with um, because Bruce was so busy in Florida. He's a realtor in Florida. And he's also part of Blue Man Group there. Yeah. His wife is the Worldwide producer phenomenon, of Blue Man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They've been going His forever. Producer of, yeah, absolutely. And so he was part of the Toronto Blue Man Group. Um, they don't normally take musicians with them when they move the show, um, but they took him with it them because his wife is the producer for blue man group and mm. so it allowed them both to move to florida and still stay employed um but i could tell you blue man group is such an amazing gig like such a wicked cool gig that i've had bruce on the phone a couple times if you ever want to you know come up and do the ime gigs i'll take your blue man gigs right <laughs> yeah i'd love to try him out but uh yeah so he couldn't he couldn't make it up for rehearsals. So I started just rehearsing with the band a lot, which was really, really, really fun because I was a huge fan growing up. Um, and then one day Bruce called me. It was about a week before our very, the very first show I played with the band and, and uh, said, I can't make it up. I can't make it up for the show. I've got this deal that's sort of falling apart. I have a couple tenants that I need to take care of. Like I just cannot leave. And uh, so can you do the show? And I was like, yeah, I guess so. And uh, that was hard because <laughs> I, I just kind of knew the songs because I was just rehearsing and just kind of goofing around. I never really gave it thought that I was going to do that. And the first show was with Slash, too. So it was this great. Big no pressure. Huge, yeah, no pressure. Right. A great big, huge show. There were probably about 5000 people there. Was and, that uh, the Empire Rock Fest in Belleville? It was out, outdoors. Right. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And uh, it went really well. I How suppose. nervous were you leading up to that first show? Oh, I was crazy nervous. And that, and it's funny, um, Jag and I have guitar player and I have become very, very close and very, very good friends. And we hug a lot now and, you know, <laughs> been to his wedding. We, we, our family spend a lot of time together, but at the time he was this entity in my life, like this rock hero of mine, right? Like one of my guitar heroes, when I was a teenager, I would go see I'm Mother Earth play. I'm about 10 years younger than those guys. And uh, and I would copy Jag's clothes, right? Like I would go out and buy the clothes that he was wearing at the shows. The cool, the <laughs> cool rock star. Yeah. And so it was a, a bit intimidating for me, but I can tell you for the very first show, I wore the shoes that I bought when I, after I saw him at, uh, the where was it? The Cool House or something like that. Back in the day, I think Our Lady Peace was opening the show, but I remember seeing the shoes and going, I'm going to go get a pair of those cons. And I, and I, so that's what I wore to my first show. But we were standing side stage and he could tell I was nervous. We were, you know, we had this sort of distance thing. He was still a little bit perturbed that it wasn't Bruce there, I guess, possibly. Um, so it's a little bit harder for them too, because it's this new thing, this new thing they're about to experience. And if, if and, the rhythm section isn't locked in, it's amazing. Oh yeah, man, it's scary. And the and the the show our set time got a little bit delayed. And so we were standing side stage waiting to go on. And um uh Jag was pacing a little bit, his energy sort of gets up there, and I was pacing a little bit, and we made eye contact. And uh he looked at me and he goes, you know what? 
And he walked over and he wrapped his arms around me and he hugged me really tight. He says, let's do this, dude. And uh, it was amazing, right? And that was the first time we sort of connected that way. And it made me realize, oh, okay, <laughs> I get where, what this is about and what this show is going to be about. It's really about just connecting with each other and I can do this, right? And, and it went really well. It was really, really fun. I, I, I know the very second show, I was a little bit taken aback. It was a uh, rock fest and a rock show in London, Ontario. And it was with Slash and Bush X. And I think Monster Truck might have opened the show. Bush Bush X before they dropped the X, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Oh, no, they I were saw... both, wait. They wanted to be Bush, but there was a Bush already, so they're Bush X. And then once they made a ton of money, they just they were able to just drop the X. You know, they had the I money to, so. to pay the original I this, band. I had this moment at that show. So, like, I've worked in music for a long time and and managed a backline company for Bare Naked Ladies and did all the much music awards and did a lot of things where I was in cool situations with people that I love. But at that show in particular, I had this moment where I'm just walking with slash. I'm like, I'm walking with slash, right? Like <laughs> he looks amazing. The inner voice. And, I'm walking yeah, yeah. with slash. And uh, as we're walking and sort of giggling or whatever, I, I look to my right and there's Gavin Rosdale in front of his tour bus. He had just gotten off stage and he's all sweaty and super handsome. I was like, there's Gavin Rosdale. What is happening? In he's my like life, painfully right? handsome. That was oh, yeah, my sister had posters yeah. of Great of, too. Uh, of Kurt Cobain and Gavin Rosdale. Those were the two, <laughs> two the two heartthrobs. Yeah. So it's uh, but that show when I got on stage, I was feeling good because of the first show. So this is the second show. I think it was maybe even the next day. Um, and uh, <laughs> it was raining. It was pouring rain and I was amazed that the crowd stayed the entire crowd I just saw umbrellas go up and people huddle in little circles and the joints getting lit and I was like this is really really cool people are staying here and they're willing to get wet and watch the band I'm gonna get wet too and so I dumped my head off the side of the stage because there was just water pouring off the edge of this massive stage like off the face of it and so I was able to lean over and get my head in it and my hair was longer at the time. I thought this is going to look cool. It'll be like Ben from Billy Talent when he dumps water on his head, right? So I stuck my head under. It was like it yeah. never, it never looks as cool as you think it's going to look, does well, it? Well, it it felt awesome, but then I I I stood back up and all the water went all over my body and all over my hands. And it was the center of a song we play that's about a fifteen minute tune of this long jam section, and, and it's uh, called Earth, Sky, and Sea, and it's got this really really intense bass part. It requires very, very fast movement in your sort of slap hand and your left hand as well, because you're cording and slapping and doing all this ridiculous stuff, this highly technical, hard to play things. And uh, I was soaked and it didn't happen. And uh, well, it didn't happen because as I started doing it, I was like, oh, no. And then I looked out and there was someone holding a phone pointing right at me. Cause they're like, I'm going to learn this bass part or I'm going to get them playing this bass part. And that freaked me out and it all just sort of fell apart. And I just stood there and stopped. Playing. <laughs> and so that was my second show with them. I had a disaster moment, but they were forgiving and, and it's been great ever since. So. You, you got it out of the way early. I know? did. I got a, a horrible mistake and just sort of stopped. And I, I think as a bass player, uh, it's a skill to know to stop rather than play through. Like if yeah. you're, if, if you're not sure, just, it's better to just skip the note. Let them assume the bass just cut out and there's technical yeah, difficulties bases, or something. I, I always equate, um, equate bass to like the dough of the music. And, it, and if you're not playing the right note, the whole cake is going to fall. Whereas a guitar player is putting the icing on and putting sprinkles and decorating it. And, uh, so you can sort of mess that up and have fun with it and hit a couple bad notes and it's still going to be kind of tasty. Mm. Um, whereas if I screw up the dough, there is no cake. So I'm hungry all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. 